Mike from Ram Clutches and today we're going to talk you through using the Ram setup sheet for the factory hydraulic internal slave or hydraulic bearing as it may be called um, in factory applications where it mounts inside the bell housing, six speed transmissions. Um, this could be your Camaros, Corvettes, uh, Challenger, even later model Mustangs all utilize that. Um, so now the worksheet that you're going to need to do this, you can find that on the website uh, under our support area and you look at the hydraulic instructions. Um, in those instructions, if you look on the right hand side of the page, you're going to see a section where it says factory hydraulics. Uh, there's going to be a detailed instruction sheet there that basically takes you through what we're going to show you here. But you'll also be able to get that important setup diagram that's going to help you do the measurements and figure out um, the math to see how this is all going to fit in there and, and make it work. Um, so now what are you going to need to do this procedure? You're going to need a six inch pair of calipers. You're going to need a straight bar at least 12 inches needs to be something long enough that will fit all the way across the bell housing to measure down to the slave bearing um, and then of course the setup sheet from the website so you're going to want to print that out so you have that handy um, so now talk a little about the factory slave and how that actually works is these slaves if you take a good look you'll see it's actually on a spring and it's sprung out so these operate on a, a principle of preload so when the transmission is slid in and the bearing comes up against the clutch fingers it's going to preload back a certain amount. So what your goal here is, is to get enough preload back on the bearing so that you have the forward movement you need for the clutch to operate properly, but yet you also want to leave enough room for that bearing to retract additionally as the clutch wears. Uh, when your clutch wears, fingers are going to get taller, that bearing is going to get pushed back, and if it gets to the point where it's bottomed out against the base of the bearing, that's going to cause the clutch to slip because the fingers are going to unload and it can't put that full clamp load on the clutch pad. Now the travel ranges do vary a little bit on these bearings. They can be anywhere from about 850, 860 thousandths up to about 1.4 inches. So you have a little bit more range to work on some cars than others. Well that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and dive in now. We're going to show you how to take these measurements and apply them to the, to the worksheet and uh, get this all in your car and work in the way it should. So the first dimension we need to check is dimension A which is from the crank flange to the back of the engine block or how far the crank is protruding and in order to check that we're going to take a straight bar and we'll lay that across the back of the crank flange and then we'll run our dial caliper down to one of the surfaces on the block where the bell housing would mount. Now if you're using a block plate between your bell housing and your engine, you want to make sure you have that in place when you take this measurement because that's going to space everything back when you do that. Once we have that, we'll record that as dimension A on our worksheet. Now the next thing we need to do is measure the height of our clutch and that is the clutch with it completely assembled just like it would be on the motor so you have to make sure that the pressure plate and everything is bolted down tightly to the flywheel now some flywheels will have a recessed crank flange so we want to make sure when we do this we set this up on top of a pedestal here so that when we take our measurement we're going from the fingers right down to what would be the back side of the engine engine block or the, the back side of the flywheel so to take that measurement, I'm going to use this, this hub to set on the fingers. That'll give me something flat. So anything flat you have with a hole in it, you could use to do that. Um, and then we'll take a caliper and we'll just run that right down through the center of the clutch disc, the center of the flywheel. And we'll measure that number. And when we check that, I see that that number is 3.130. And then I have to make sure I take and check the thickness of this clutch hub and subtract that from the total and then we're going to record that as dimension C on our worksheet. So with our T56 bell housing now we're going to take our, our factory slave cylinder and we're going to go ahead and put that in place and the measure we're going to take now is dimension D, which is the bearing extended, that is with it completely out. This bearing is a spring loaded outward and works on a, on a preload method. So we're going to measure that. We're going to lay our straight bar up once again. And then we'll measure down to that face of the bearing. 
and we'll also again want to make sure we're going to subtract the, the thickness of our straight bar and we'll go ahead and record that now uh, as dimension D on our worksheet. Now to do the compressed bearing measurement it's probably easier if you go ahead and just remove uh, the bearing from the uh, base here and you can do that by pressing down and twisting it it will lift up off you can pop that spring off that's going to let you get the bearing all the way back into position so now we have it fully retracted um, and we know we're going to get the absolute maximum uh, travel backwards on that by doing that and once again we'll come back and measure down to the face retracted and subtract our thickness once again and now we can go ahead and record that as dimension B which is our compressed bearing height. Okay so now we're ready to do a little math so we got our compressed and extended bearing heights we saw that we had 3.60 for our compressed height, 2.65 for our extended height. If we subtract those two, we come up with 950, so that gives us what the total travel of this particular slave is. And what we're trying to do is achieve about 700 thousandths of compression, and that's going to leave a couple hundred thousandths left there for wear over time. So we transfer those numbers down, 3.60 there. We take our A plus our C, we're at 3.4, and if we take that B minus the A plus C, we end up with a perfect clearance of 0.200. So that's exactly where we want to be. Now to look at what our free play or what our preload is, we would take our A plus C once again, the 3.4, and we'll subtract that from our D dimension the 2.65 and when we do that we see that we have 0.750 preload so in this particular case everything worked out exactly perfect the way we need to be we don't have to do any extra shimming or anything to make this work out. Now if you get done here and you've done your measurements and you find out your preload is not enough or too much you know for instance if you're working with a uh, a nine, say a 950, 960 travel bearing, you're, you're ideally looking for that number to be about 700 thousandths. Um, if you were to check it and it was very low, say 500 thousandths, that's not really going to be enough preload. Um, you can use a shim behind the slave bearing to move that out and reduce that gap. Um, if, the, if it's too tight, if the bearing is going to be loaded all the way back, now you're going to have to look at some ways to, to create some new space and that might involve um, using a spacer between the bell housing and the engine to space the, the whole assembly back some. Uh, possibly a spacer between the transmission and the bell housing. Uh, or you could look at what your clutch height and what your flywheel thickness is. Um, there are thinner flywheels made that can, could help you create some more space to make that all work together. Uh, bottom line, you know, if you get all these measurements done, if you're not sure where to go, you can send us a copy of, of your worksheet or take a picture of it and email it to the ramtech at ramclutches.com. We'll take a look at it, analyze it, see if we can help give you some suggestions on ways that will help you get this all back together and work in the way it should.